Great. Yeah, so that's uh, it's also worth mentioning. Um, the session will be recorded, so if any of you do have to leave or um, you know, you've got other things going on, then then just um, let us know, and we can uh, we can send out the, the content to you via a, a link. Um, which is always useful. Great. So we're recording, Stuart, and I'll make that two o'clock. So if you're happy to start. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Sam said, my name is Stuart Lawler. Uh, I work for Sight and Sound Technology here, managing our um, Irish uh, service. And um, we're delighted to be with you for uh, week number three of these uh, sessions supporting uh, QTVI uh, professionals in, uh, in the UK. And actually, before we go into today's session, uh, next week, Sam, do you want to promote your, um, your Taptilo gig? Because you're doing a session on Taptilo next week. Uh, so we will have a session next week on uh, the Taptilo Braille learning system, which is oh. uh, really good. Sorry, Stuart, I was muted. I muted myself. Thank That's you. okay. No problem. Sorry, I was saying, as Stuart said, we've got week, yeah, weekly sessions now. So next week, um, I'll be delivering a session on the Taptilo, which is a, a smart digital uh, Braille learning device. Um, so it has a, um, it's, it's a great um, device for, for students and teachers um, to communicate. Um, and it's got a whole range of games, features, um, that the student can do independently, independent learning, but also obviously in class. Um, and it pairs with a great app as well for the phone. So we'll be looking at that next week. Yeah, uh, it's one of those devices actually that um, I think, you know, it, 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 it's already doing so much and, and, and sometimes, somehow I feel we're just at the start of its potential. Definitely. So, uh, you know, definitely worth, worth coming to next week. Okay, so thanks for that, Sam. So today we're talking about JAWS uh, and JAWS is an acronym for job access with speech. And I think the key word there is, is job. Um, JAWS is a screen reading package that's been around for about 27 years in, 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 in a lot of different forms. It started off as a, um, a DOS-based screen reader for the old command line interface. And then we had the Windows 3.1.1 version for those who might remember way back then in the early to mid 90s. And it has evolved over time to be a hugely powerful application for blind and people with, you know, maybe a severe, um, severe low vision to use to access all aspects of computing. And I've been a JAWS user. I was just thinking about this yesterday. I've been a JAWS user since 1996. I get a bit nervous when I think about that. Um, and one of the things I will say straight away uh, no less than something like, say, Microsoft Word. There are very few people, I've yet to meet somebody who knows everything about Microsoft Word. I've yet to meet somebody who knows everything about JAWS. The product is always evolving. The product is huge. And there's a lot to talk about. And we will be only scratching the surface in this session. But if you do want to know more, please, keep, uh, please get in touch with us. Um, and if you feel that more, tr more training or more sessions in this, um, in this area would be useful, please just let us know. So I'm gonna share my computer screen today. Um, and so you'll be able to see what I'm doing and you'll be able to hear what I'm doing because of course the big focus today with JAWS is screen reading. And we're going to break the session into four main components. The first part we'll be talking about installation and configuration of JAWS. How do you set it up to make it do exactly what you want? In the second part, we'll be looking at Microsoft Word and we'll be particularly looking at how JAWS can help you format your documents and make sure everything looks okay. In the third section, I'll be looking at the World Wide Web and how JAWS operates on the internet. And in section four, I'll be looking at a very new feature in JAWS called Picture Smart, where we'll do some interesting things with um, artificial intelligence and how JAWS is working with that. So more about all that later. And I'm happy to stop at the end of each session, of, e of each section rather, so that you can ask questions. And of course, if you have questions later on, we're happy to take those too. As Sam says, you can uh, raise your hand, you can type in the Q&A, you can type in the chat, and Sam will be keeping an eye on those things. So that's the plan for today. Again, great to have you 
you all here and I hope everybody is well and safe. So let me uh, share out my screen, first of all, just one moment whilst I do this and share my computer sound and share screen. Meeting control. Sam, you can see my screen. Meeting controls. And hear yes. my speech. Brilliant. That sounds good. Okay. Zoom. JAWS professional. So I'm bringing the JAWS um, application window into focus at the moment on my screen. When you install JAWS back in the day, you know, I, I, I'm long enough, I've been using this thing long enough to remember when it used to come with floppy disks and cassette tapes for the training tutorials. So, so now, of course, JAWS comes as a download link. So when you, if you purchase JAWS, you will get a link where you will be able to, um, to go online and grab the software and um, install it on your computer. The installation is very, is very straightforward. And then you get um, an activation screen where you type in a code that you will have been sent when you purchase the software and that license the software for your use online. Okay, so that process is very straightforward. Um, the licensing piece, uh, the activation piece takes about like 30 seconds to complete. And then you'll be brought into something called the JAWS Startup Wizard when you run JAWS for the first time. And that's what I want to spend a bit of time on first. And the Startup Wizard is literally that. It sort of says, hey, how do you want this thing to run? How are you going to be using this thing? Is it your computer? Are you sharing the computer with others? How do you like your speech to sound, etc.? cetera? So you, we'll, we'll go through some of these things. Now, if you miss the Startup uh, wizard, because it only runs the first time you start JAWS, you can open it anytime you want from the help menu, which is what I'm going to do, because I obviously have been running JAWS for a long time on my computer. I haven't used the startup wizard, but actually, as it turns out, I do want to make some changes today. So you guys have given me the great reason to do this. So I'm going to press Alt and H from within the JAWS application window to open the help menu. Menu, help menu, command, search, insert, space, J. And I'm just going to arrow until I hear startup wizard. Check, license, start, about, startup oh, wizard. There we go. I almost missed it. So when I press enter here, JAWS is going to launch its startup wizard, and it's going to uh, give us the um, experience that we might have if we were running this for the first time. So I'll press enter. Leaving menus, JAWS startup wizard dialogue. Help us improve freedom scientific products. Would you like to participate in our effort to improve freedom scientific products? by submitting anonymous usage data, participate checkbox check. Okay, so the very first option they're covering their, uh, their GDPR piece, I suppose. Would you like to help us by providing um, anonymous usage, anonymous data? You can choose to check this to say yes or no. If you don't choose to do this, you will unfortunately not be able to use the picture smart feature that I'm going to talk about later on. And I'll come back to that later. But for the moment, I've ticked it. I don't mind my data anonymously going over to, to Freedom Scientific. Learn more button. I can learn more if I want. Next button. Or I can press next. So let's press next. Speech settings. Rate 67. Left, right slider. 24%. Okay. We're now in our speech settings. Just to explain this briefly, you can set several different we call them voice profiles in JAWS to do different things. So I might decide that, you know, I, I like to read my emails and I like to sort of do my work stuff using one speech synthesizer at one rate. But you know something in the evening times when I want to just read a book, I want a more human sounding speech synthesizer and I want it to speak at a different rate and I'll create a different voice profile for that scenario. And I can switch those profiles on the fly. Or I might decide, you know, I'm learning German uh, this, this year, uh, but my German's not very good. So I want to set up a profile for German, but I need it a lot slower than the speech I listen to my English at. Okay, so that's where voice profiles can be very useful. And there are lots of different scenarios you might use them. And obviously there's lots of different synthesizers and supported languages um, that you can use here as well. So again, in a school setting for language switching, this is very easily done. And indeed, uh, language switching on the web or in PDF documents or in uh, Microsoft Word will happen automatically once the document has been marked up with the appropriate language codes. And if people want more information on that, we can talk about that later. So the first option here allows me to set the voice rate. What is the 
uh, rate of speech I want. So uh, just to give you some examples, we're on rate 67, left right slider 24%. We're on 24% of the of the fastest that this thing can talk. Okay, so we'll just show you. I'll just use the page up and page down keys to navigate this. 34, 40, 50, 64, 74%, 84%. I don't listen to it at that speed, by the way, just to be clear. But Sa Sam was saying my, my speed is about um, 54%. about that. And we, we thought that was a, a, a wee bit fast for this session. So let's bring it back down. 24%. Okay, that's perfect. So you can, again, select your speech rate at this point. You can also change speech uh, speed on the fly if you want. So if you're maybe in the middle of a document or you just want to change it quickly, there's a keystroke to do that. In fact, there are keystrokes for so many things in JAWS, and I will show you. Um, before the end of the session, where to find them. Now we'll tab to the next option. Punctuation combo box none one of four. Okay, this option will control how much punctuation is spoken by your screen reader. None will obviously speak none at all. Some two of four. Some usually speaks commas and full stops. Most three of four. Most throws in things like exclamation marks, question marks, and brackets. All four of four. And all will speak every single thing. Now, for most people, the defaults in JAWS, I think, is some. For most people, certainly advanced users, people who've been using this thing for a while, will opt for none. I certainly don't want every comma and exclamation mark spoken. But there are times when you may want to do that. Maybe you're, maybe you're proofreading something. Maybe you're computer programming. And when you're computer programming or you're writing um, HTML or something, every, every right bracket or left bracket counts, doesn't it? So you may choose to change these again in a spe specific voice profile. But I'll change this back because I don't want my punctuation spoken. None. One of four. That, uh, by the way, I should clarify, that does not mean that when you're arrowing through a document or spelling something letter by letter that you can't hear the punctuation. And we'll see that when we look at Microsoft Word. Off radio button check, one to four. Okay, there's some options here uh, for what are called tutor messages. So JAWS gives you, can give you very helpful messages. Like for example, if it opened a menu, it might say uh, menu active, uh, use arrow keys to move through this menu, which is really helpful. Uh, for beginner users, a bit too verbose for those of us who've been using it for a while, so I've turned it off, but you can enable this. Lower the volume of other programs while JAWS is speaking, checkbox not checked. Okay, this is an option that I don't know that I need to say much more. I think JAWS has explained it very well. Lower the volume of other programs while JAWS is speaking. So if you're maybe listening to music, or maybe you get a notification in and you want to hear, uh, you want to maybe hear JAWS, um, speak that notification. It will lower the volume of your music. It'll speak the notification and then bring the music back up again. So it's a, a, a checkbox you can turn on or off. Back button. Next button. All right, let's move to the next screen and the setup in the Startup Wizard. There are about five of these, by the way, and I won't take as long in the rest of them as I did in this. Run JAWS settings. If you select Start JAWS at the logon screen, JAWS will be loaded at the log. Okay, I'm going to briefly talk about all the options in this screen in one go, hopefully. This screen essentially is configuring how JAWS will load. Now, if you're using this, you're using JAWS on your own computer and you're the only user, you can configure it to load at startup and to load once you log into Windows. But what, for example, if Sam and myself were sharing a computer? Sam is uh, fully sighted. He doesn't, he certainly does not want to hear JAWS talking all the time when he's logging in to go online. So Sam has um, a user profile on the computer and I have a user profile. We can tell JAWS, hey, speak the logon screen. But when you see Sam has logged in, don't load up. When you see Stuart has logged in, load up. Okay, so you can configure those kind of things. Um, start JAWS after logon for all. Start JAWS after logon for run JAWS from system tray checkbox not check. Run JAWS from the system tray allows us to run JAWS to to um, to keep the JAWS program down beside where the clock is down the bottom of the screen rather than having it as its own application window. This feature has been around for a while, and I know a lot of people who use it. But those of us who are who've been using this thing forever like the old way of having JAWS as its own application window. So I don't opt to 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 have this ticked. Prompt to confirm when exiting JAWS checkbox not checked. This is an interesting one, and this is actually one that. Uh, I changed a while ago, prompt to confirm when exiting JAWS. Up to very recently, when you quit JAWS, it will speak a warning, say, hey, are you sure you want to quit? Because if you quit now, your speech is going to stop. Um, it's very useful to have that, obviously. But again, if you've been using JAWS for a while, the, um, the, 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 I guess the, the presumption here is that, that, that you know that you're going to cut off JAWS if you exit it. So you can opt to have this message spoken or not. 
Back button. Next button. Right, let's move to the next screen. Common options. Off radio button checked. One of three. Okay, these are a few um, common options to do certain things. So um, Just smart navigate PC. the first one is something called smart navigation, which is used in web-based applications like, for example, Gmail, uh, Office 365 online, SharePoint online. And it, it can, in some cases, assist with how JAWS will present information to you in a live um, environment where a web application is updating all the time. You can turn that on or off. It, it's one of these things you have to test and it's very application specific. Manual radio button check, three of three. This is something for forms mode. And I'll be talking about forms mode when I uh, talk about using the web. But basically you can configure, you can set JAWS up so that if it sees an edit box on a web page, it'll pop you directly into that and make a little sound so that you know you are editing text. But I'll come back to forms mode when I talk about the internet and this might make more sense to you. Use keyboard layout, combo box, laptop, two or three. This option lets you choose what keyboard layout you want to use. Uh, because I'm using a laptop, I've chosen a laptop layout. Use virtual ribbon menus checkbox not checked. And virtual ribbon menus are a series of menus that aid or that can, for some people, aid in uh, navigation of what are called the virtual ribbons or the um, um, ribbon menus in programs like Microsoft Word or Outlook. Uh, I don't tend to use them. Turn off at startup radio button checked. One of three. Use the numlock key, turn off at startup. Back button. And that's because keys on the numeric keypad um, on the desktop keyboard are used for JAWS navigation. Next Verbosity settings, turn off menu and control help radio okay, button check. I'm very quickly going to talk about verbosity settings. So um, verbosity indicates how verbose the screen reader will be. Will it tell you every time you access a menu? Will it tell you every time something happens? People like different levels of verbosity. People like to customize how much information they get from their screen reader. So again, you can configure these things here in uh, the verbosity settings and say what you want or do not want to hear. Off radio button check, one of four. Advanced, lowest radio, but labeled graphics radio button check. There's an option here for graphics that I just want to mention. So where an application has graphics, uh, where um, information in an application is represented by graphics, this can be challenging for JAWS to read. And the best example I can give you of this is maybe a media player where there's maybe, there's maybe controls for play, pause, rewind, fast forward. They haven't been labeled in the application, but they have little pictures over them. So a sighted person can see, oh, there's the play button, I click on that. A JAWS user will hear that graphic read as something like 561. So what does 561 mean? So you can tell JAWS not to read those at all, to ignore them or to read them, or you can actually label them yourself or have someone label them for you if you know what they are. So again, they're sort of advanced features, but it's just to give you a sense of what you can do. Back button, next. Braille translation settings. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the Braille settings. I'm just gonna say about Braille, because if I start talking about Braille, Sam may not get this webinar finished in time. Um, I'll just say that Braille and JAWS and the uh, support and functionality for Braille is huge. And we have a separate webinar planned to talk about Braille and JAWS and how to use Braille. So do come back or do keep an eye on that over the next couple of weeks. Braille um, setting. We'll be talking about Braille. More. JAWS professional. And that is the end of the startup wizard. So you will do that the first time you install JAWS, you'll configure your settings. And then the next time you install a new version of JAWS, those settings will be kept. You can um, export your settings if you want. You can even share your settings with somebody else. So in a school environment, maybe, where there's a number of JAWS users together, somebody can kind of create a whole load of settings that kind of work across the board, maybe in a particular application that the whole class is doing, and then share those settings out, which can be really handy. Okay, that is the end of the first section. Uh, Sam, I'm very happy if there are questions or comments in relation to that to deal with those now. Great. Yeah, well, I think so far we just have the one, um, just to, which you've, you've pretty much covered. But um, yeah, we were just um, uh, needing a bit of clarification on this, the shortcut for uh, increasing the speech rate. So quick, yep. very, quick, very quickly, um, how do we do that? Uh, control, control Windows page up, Control Windows page down uh, will increase the speech, the speech rate temporarily and control windows shift page up 
and control with your shift page down will con will in in will increase um, or decrease the speed rate permanently. So when I say temporarily, I mean just for that application until you alt and tab away from it. So it might just be, I just need this a bit slower in Microsoft Word to read this document, but I certainly don't want it to be slow all the time. Great. That's, uh, thanks, Stuart. Yeah, I think that, that was all we've got so far, so we can, we can push on. Okay, brilliant. Let's continue then to talk about Microsoft Word. I'm oh, going to do... Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Just before, we've got one, one quick one that's just come in. Sure. Um, the shortcut to switch profile. Um, Yes, there is to switch voice pro profile. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm really liking this. There are, people are really testing my shortcuts today. <laughs> it's uh, Windows, Windows insert an S, I do believe. Um, Select the voice profile yeah, dialog. Windows insert an S. So just to show you, uh, Windows, the, uh, sorry, it's not Windows, it's, um, it's Control uh, insert an S or Control and JAWS key an S. On a desktop keyboard, the JAWS key is the, um, insert key on, uh, on the numeric keypad. So bottom left key, which is also zero. On a laptop keyboard layout, the JAWS key is the, is the caps lock key. So let me just JAWS professional. escape out of that. Press, so I'll press control, caps lock and S. Select the voice. Uh, what other voice profiles do I have here? Microsoft mobile, two or four. Microsoft Sabby, Sabby five at Sab Microsoft. Let's press enter on Microsoft mobile, see what it sounds like. JAWS professional. There we go. JAWS professional. So now I'm in Microsoft Mobile and I want to switch back to Eloquence. Select a voice. Which is the default. S Microsoft Mobile, Eloquence. JAWS professional. There we go. Great. Thanks. Yeah, that's, that's helpful. And then, um, yeah, we've got one quick one. Uh, another one we've got. Uh, is there a, con uh, George has asked, is there a condensed version of the shortcut keys available for a more basic learner? Yeah, I mean, uh, Georgia, what, what, what I would say is in the help menu, there are help topics for keyboard shortcuts. Um, I, 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 I think you could probably like, for example, you can just get desktop keyboard layouts. You can get laptop keyboard shortcuts. You can also in most applications press window, um, um, insert an H for a list of keyboard shortcuts um, and insert an W will give you Windows keyboard shortcuts you might find over time that you kind of pull out the ones that your students really want and just make those into a list. Great. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you from George there as well. Great. Okay. Right. So we're going to now um, have a little bit of a play with Microsoft Word and I'm going to do, I suppose, two bits to this. I'm going to just show you Microsoft Word and it's kind of basic uh, state with JAWS and how we can just kind of get some information on terms of looking at the text we're writing and some of the characteristics of that text. And then I'm going to show you a feature called the text analyzer, which is a bit of an under uh, underused feature, maybe um, under advertised. It's certainly a feature I've always been telling people about. And I'll tell you a little story about text analyzer when we come to that. We always pepper these things with stories to keep people entertained because well, listening to me all for an hour might not be very entertaining. Right. So let's go to the desktop and go to Microsoft Word. Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Edge. Oh my goodness. My documents OneDrive. Microsoft Teams. It could be worse, Stuart. Word. It is Word. My gosh. Word not. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. You'd think I'd know that by now, wouldn't you? I only use this thing every day. Right. Let's press enter on Word. Opening. Opening Word. Document one word. Edit. Okay. So here's my Microsoft Word, uh, Office 365, uh, and um, a new blank document. Now, one of the things I skipped by in the startup wizard when I was talking about startup options and common options was a feature to turn to control the keyboard echo within JAWS. So by, um, by default, when you, when you get JAWS first, when you install it first, it will speak every key as you type. And there's good reason for that because I think people who are beginning are probably still learning to use the keyboard and, they, and you need to be able to have that speech feedback. What am I typing? So Characters. for example, Hello. Uh, just wait. Words, both non characters. Now, it should actually be speaking characters, but for some reason, it's not. Words. Hello. Okay. So. Both characters. My. 
uh, Jaws is currently speaking. Jaws is currently speaking every word as I hit the space bar. Uh, I have turned it on to characters and it's not, I think it might be something to do with the screen share and JAWS, but watch when it's on characters, it will speak every single character. So as you're typing, it will speak. Um, Hello space. I'm just going to delete that text. None. So you can configure your level of feedback that you get from the keyboard in the application. You can also configure it on the fly in any application by pressing insert or the JAWS key and the number two on the row, on the top row of numbers. And that will toggle between no echo at all. Characters. Character echo. Words. Word echo. Both characters and words. Or both characters and words. None. I'm going to put it to none. And I'm going to just write something. Okay, so just a little bit of text here. Hello, my name is Stuart Lawler. Today we are using the screen reader JAWS for Windows. Okay, I think when you're, when you're producing documents and certainly when you're producing for a sighted audience, and I'll come back to that in a few minutes, it's really key to know that your document is going to look well and that it, it sits, that it fits well and, and, and sounds well, I suppose, and that it visually will look well. So I want to first of all know Hello. what font I'm writing in. Comma, space, M, Y. Because I actually don't Yankee. know what font I'm set up. So let's press Windows key, or rather my JAWS key, with the letter F for font. 11 point, default on default, delivery, normal style, line spacing, one line, paragraph formatting, aligned left, outline level, body text. So I'm in Calibri 11 point. I actually think 11 point's probably a, a wee bit small. Um, so I'm going to select all this text by pressing Control and A. Hello, comma. I always tend to use 14 point as, a, as, a st as an absolute minimum. So I'm going to press Control, Shift, and uh, full stop to, to make the font bigger. 12 point, 14 point. There we go. E-L-L-O, 14 point, default on default, delivery, normal style, line spacing, zero lines, paragraph formatting, aligned left. Out okay, so now it's told me that I'm uh, left aligned, I'm in 14 point font, normal text. I want to, um, I want to bold the words JAWS screen reader. Today we are using the screen reader JAWS for Windows. Oh, screen reader. I'll just bold, I'll just bold the word JAWS then. Comma, we are using the screen reader. And I want to show you something else. JAWS is in capitals. E-A-D-E-R space J-A-W-S. As you've heard. And you will have also noticed that my synthesizer spoke at a higher pitch. And that is to, um, to show me or to indicate that those letters are in uppercase. Now you can change this and you can not only change um, the variance in pitch, but you can also change to have a sound played instead of the, the, the synthesizer playing at a, or speaking at a, um, a higher pitch. So you can highly customize JAWS to your needs, but I'm gonna select the, just highlight the word or, or uh, select the word JAWS. JAWS, A, J, JAWS. And let's bold that by pressing Control and B. On. Now, if I was using JAWS in its um, in its in its pre-installed state, when it comes installed, rather, it would have said bold on. But I have turned off a lot of my verbosity options, so JAWS sounds a bit different. We are using the screen reader JAWS. J -J -A -J. Uh, let me just check Juliet. the font attributes for this now. Bolded fourteen point default on default delivery normal style. So that's the key thing I needed to hear, bolded. The text is bolded. Now, I want to put a heading on this document. E -H. So I want to just create a blank line, blank. and I want to say um, Stuart's info document. Stuart's info document. S-E-S-T. -E. 14 point, default on default, delivery, normal style, line spacing, zero lines, paragraph formatting, aligned left, outline well, level. I want it to be a heading, so I want it to look a bit more exciting. Than the rest of the text. So first of all, I want to center yes. it. So I'm going to select the line. Sierra, Stuart's info document. And I'm going to press Control and E, which is a shortcut to center. These are uh, Microsoft Word shortcuts, by the way. Center. Let's get some yes. uh, characteristics of the text now. 14 point, default on default, delivery, normal style, line spacing, zero lines, paragraph formatting, centered, outline. That's what I wanted to hear. That's now centered. And I want to make it a heading. So I want to make it stand out in, on the screen. Stuart's info document. And I'm going to press Control Alt and One to give this a heading one to give it a pretty major uh, priority, I suppose, in the document. 
Blank. Heading level one. Stuart's info document. Oh, look there. It said heading level one. So it's telling me it's a pretty major push piece of text. S E U. 16 point steel blue four on default. Calibri light. Heading one style lines. And now it's given me some additional. It's told me it's done some additional things. First of all, it's brought the, the size up to 16 point steel blue four. I mean, to, to me, um, and I've been blind from birth, those things don't mean a whole lot. But the point is, I can create uh, visually uh, text that I am very, I'm pretty confident from what JAWS tells me is going to look well if I show that to a sighted person. Now, that brings me on to something called Text Analyzer. So I'm going to close this document. File name, file name, menu, leaving me save, but don't save. And I am Word. very conscious that we're whizzing, no open whizzing through this, but uh, we do have a lot to cover, and we can certainly look at this in more detail if people would like. Desktop, so, folder view, list view. I have a text document, or rather a document in my documents folder. Microsoft, my documents, OneDrive. Let's go in here. My documents, items. And it should be called. Training, transition, test, braille, video, text analyzer, practice document. Text analyzer, practice document. That's the one. Okay. So before I open this, let me tell you a little story. Um, in my previous job uh, working here um, um, in Dublin, I was very frequently writing information and presenting um, printed information to sighted staff and sighted members of the public. I was doing a lot of that stuff. And I found I was always showing stuff to sighted colleagues to say, will you look at that? Is that okay? Is that, does that look all right? And inevitably there was something that didn't look all right. And I was very glad I showed it to somebody and they were able to help me fix it up. And about three years ago, I attended a seminar run by uh, Freedom Scientific, the people who make JAWS um, here in Dublin. And the guy who was here talked about a feature called Text Analyzer, which had actually been around for about three years, but which never crossed my radar. It came in one of the new versions of JAWS. It was mentioned as part of the new features, but it was also mentioned with about six other features. And clearly the other five must have grabbed my attention more. And when I saw this Text Analyzer, I kind of said, where have I been and how, how have I been plaguing all these sighted people to look at my documents when I could have got JAWS to do a hell of a lot of it? I will say to you that I think nothing can compensate for somebody visually looking at something for you and giving you some feedback. But Text Analyzer does a really good job. Um, we also describe it as sort of like somebody uh, standing, standing behind you looking over your shoulder at the screen and saying, hey, careful there. You forgot something. So let's show you this really quickly. It's a great feature. So I'm going to open this document, which has a couple of little um, inconsistencies, let's say, and we'll see, can we find them? Opening Word, opening Word. So this is opening Microsoft Text Word. Text analyzer, practice document, compatibility mode, Word. New notification from Word. We'd love your feedback. Okay, well, I don't want to get Heading level feedback at the moment. The Freedom Thank you. Scientific Training Department has released. Okay, so this is a document. Um, from Freedom Scientific from a couple of years ago. Let's look at the top. Heading level one schedule of online webinars announced through July 2011. Schedule of online. So that's a heading level one uh, because JAWS said it. G. If I did uh, check my Charlie. font. Bolded, 14 point, steel blue four on default, Cambria, heading one style. So it's bolded, it's a heading one style, it's meant to be a heading. So I'm not going to worry about that one. I'm going to... The Freedom Scientific Training Department has released the online webinar schedule. Okay, so I'm now on the first line of main of the main text of the document. And the text analyzer has a couple of shortcuts, but the one I'm going to use is press Windows with Alt and the letter I to move to the first inconsistency or what JAWS thinks is the first inconsistency uh, in the document. Stray punctuation period at 300. Stray punctuation at 300. The reference to 300, by the way, is that this feature was initially um, developed as an in-house feature for Freedom Scientific's programmers and tech support staff. And that's because they felt it would be very useful to help them when they're coding if they missed um, a punctuation mark. As we said earlier, that's really important. Um, and also it was because the tech support guys, when they were answering emails, they were cutting and pasting information from the web until somebody said to them, and most of these guys were blind, until somebody said to them, guys, 
that looks visually terrible. That, that whole thing is in a different font. But when you read it with a screen reader, of course, you don't realize that. So text analyzer is meant to help with all this. So it's telling me there's a stray punctuation. Where is it? Space, Y, A, Y, A, D, space, Y, space, D, A, Y. There's the word day. Space, period, space, J. Oh, look, there is a stray punctuation. Space, period. So the space shouldn't be before that full stop. It should, there should just, the full stop should be attached onto the word day. So let's fix that. Space, Y, period, space. Okay. Now let's ask JAWS to find the next inconsistency. Again, Windows, Alt, and I. Space run at 399. Space run. C, I, C, space, space, P, R, oh, P, spaces, space, so P, space, space, one. space. Now, space. If, you, if you learned to type on, a, on a, um, a manual typewriter as I did, I spent years using a computer because I was told religiously by my typing teacher at the time, hey, press two spaces after every full stop. And I did that forever until somebody told me only a couple of years ago, Stuart, you don't need to do that anymore. Microsoft Word does that for you automatically. And I, it took me so long to get that out of my head. So I'm still learning that. Anyway, we've taken out a stray space, so that's good. Font change Cambria 13 points bold on steel blue free. Font change. So it's, it's picked up something here and it's, not, it's telling me there's something different. But I'm going to read this line because I'm suspecting it's a subheading. Heading level two free webinars. Heading, it's a heading level two, so it is. It's a subheading. It's not actually an inconsistency. The follow it's meant to be there. So let's go again. Font change Arial free. Space F R. The following is the schedule of free webinars for June and July free. Okay, so the word free of space O. Eleven point default on default Calibri normal style is in Calibri. Free F R E. Eleven point default on default Arial normal style. Free the word free. Web four. 11 point default on default Calibri. The word free has just for some reason managed to turn into Arial, but everything else is in Calibri. So uh, I could change that to, uh, let's just read free. change the word Sp free to free. Arial. Uh, go into fonts with control shift and F. Font edit Arial, font edit combo uh, Arial. Are looking for Calibri? Arial Nova, Cal Calibri, Calibri. Edit. Let's see, has it changed? F R F. 11 point default on default Calibri normal Brilliant. style. So I've changed the R -E -E. word free and we just do one more. Link hyperlink field font change underline on blue link w w w. Okay, the hyperlink I'm not worried about because they need to look different anyway. One, Facebook with stray punctuation left parent at 909. Stray punctuation. So it sees a punctuation mark. Space left parent space left space misspelled C ah. space left space J. There's a space there. There shouldn't be a space, space there. So we take that space out. So you get the idea. It's someone standing over your shoulder watching you going, hey, Mr. Space there, you, you, you didn't join that full stop onto the word. It's a re and, and honestly, I've used this so much. Now, I do want to say to you that, yes, I always think as a totally blind person who's been using screen readers for, what I said to you, 1996, so quite a while, I will still, if it's a very important document, I will not let it go out without checking with a sighted person. But the amount of checking and the amount of feedback they have to give me is usually now significantly less since I've been using Text Analyzer. So Sam, I'm happy to, this is the end of the second piece. I'm happy to take some questions if there are any. No, sure. we're, we're okay. We're, uh, we're, I think we're happy to move forward. Okay, and that's perfect. So I'm gonna close the Text Analyzer document. Microsoft, don't, can't, don't say. And we will save that one. Items new multi. Okay. Desktop. Let's talk about the web. And before we go into the web, I want to say to you that we could run several webinars and do nothing only the web. So you're just going to get a glimpse at what happens. Now, in the in the good old days, in the old days when the web was very simple and very navigable, maybe. Um, you know, it was relatively straightforward to use the web. And then we got all sorts of crazy things going on with flash and animations. And I suppose um, web developers realized that the web, and the web is of course ever changing and needed to be interactive and needed to be um, dynamic, I suppose. And uh, they, they realized that for that to happen, um, a lot of things needed to be happening at once. And for screen readers, that was, and still is in some cases, quite a challenge. We've kind of come some way in that respect because there are lots of guidelines for um, accessible content. And if I, if I tell you nothing else today, I suppose, because I've been telling people this for years, we always say to people, listen, 
accessibility does not mean boring. Accessibility does not mean you can only have text and you can't have images and you can't have, you know, that kind of dynamic change in content. You just have to make sure it's done in a way that the screen reader can intercept. In earlier versions of JAWS, when you were on the web, it was very challenging, and indeed it would have been very challenging to do this today, for a sighted person to really understand, to keep track of what's going on when a screen reader user, user is using the web. But si recently JAWS have put um, a highlight feature in, so you will hopefully in a moment be able to see what I'm doing. To try to explain to you how the web works, and as somebody who's never seen, my perception of the web is it's just a page. It's top to bottom, there's lines of text, there's links, and that's it. I don't have any concept of the, the navigation links on the left and the text in the middle and the search bar, wherever the search bar is. But to be honest, I don't need to. It doesn't come onto my radar. It's not an issue for me. That's because JAWS presents everything to me in a linear manner. So a web page, when I look at it in a second, and you'll see this in a sec, a web page will pretty much look like a Word document. I'll be able to navigate around and move through it and copy text and do whatever I want. And a lot of the same keystrokes that we used in uh, Microsoft Word will also work on the web. In terms of browsers, well, uh, Internet Explorer was around forever and we all used it until it almost died a death. And that was because a lot of the very sophisticated advanced features on the web in JAWS worked best in Internet Explorer. Of course, it's really not recommended that you use it now for all sorts of reasons, not least because it's not really being patched and there are a lot of security holes. We found Chrome to work really well. We found Edge to work really well. And we found Firefox to work well. But the problem with Firefox is they do, and they're doing great work, but they do so many updates that occasionally things break. And when things break with Firefox and JAWS and other screen readers, by the way, they tend to break really badly. So I'm not inclined to say Firefox. I'm inclined to say hover between Chrome and Edge. And the new version of Edge is built on Chromium. So the, the, the feel of it is very similar. It's not identical, but it's very similar. Hover between Chrome and Edge and you're gonna be absolutely fine. Okay, with all that said, let's have a look at the web and see how it might work. And I've chosen a website called thejournal.ie, which you guys probably don't know in the UK, but it's an Irish media outlet. It's really, really good, re highly accessible because they contacted us uh, a couple of years ago or, uh, when I was working in a um, different organization to help them make the site accessible and they have adhered to that. And it's a, a really, it's my kind of, uh, my go-to news source in the morning when I'm wanting to check what's been going on overnight. Of course, there's millions of ways to open a web browser. There's lots of different ways to do everything in Windows. I'm gonna use one way that works for me, but you can do whatever works for you. And I'm gonna actually do it from the Windows Run option, which you can do with press it by pressing Windows and or. Run dialog, type the name of a program folder. And I'm just gonna type www the journal.ie and press Excuse enter. Yep. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, Skip. We've just got a request to just to slow the speech down a little. Um, no problem at all. Yeah. Desktop, JAWS professional, JAWS professional. Uh, slower, slow, 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 slower. Task switching. Is that a bit better? JAWS professional. Hopefully that's a little bit better. If, if, there's, yeah. if you're still having difficulty, please raise your hand or shout, shout in our direction. And thank you, Sam. Yeah. So. Run dialog www.thejournal.ie Desktop, folder view, list view, my documents, one drive, 15 of 15. I do believe I only did the temporary speech change. Sorry, the journal, e read, share. Now. Apologies. Sl sl slower, slower. Okay. The journal, e read, share and shape the news. I'm at the top of this page. The journal.ie, read, share and shape the news. That's what, that's the title. I don't actually know what it looks like visually. It, it's not going to impact me if I know what it looks like visually. Um, and in the early days of, of, I suppose, using the internet, I always remember using, showing, um, working with somebody who was sighted, who was going to be supporting a blind, uh, a blind user to use JAWS of the internet. And she was saying to me, is that over on the right-hand side? And I said, I have no idea. I don't know where it is. And then we, we really chat, we found it really challenging to work that out. So I think if you throw those ideas out and just think of the web as a, a, um, a linear top to bottom page. Now, when you're on the web, JAWS uses the keyboard to do different things. So it uses the letter H, for example, if you press H, 
that will jump from heading to heading. And the journal.ie have broken their news stories into headings. So if I press H. An idiotic idea, Michael O'Leary says Ryanair won't return to flying if middle seats must be left empty, heading level one link. I'll definitely be reading that later on. Michael O'Leary is always entertaining guy. Uh, if we press H again, it gets the next uh, story. Not necessary to disinfect outside of food packaging after buying. Shoppers advised heading level four link. And you can see there it's saying heading level four because that's a heading, but it's also saying link. It's telling me, hey, if you want to read this, you can press enter. Man arrested after stabbing in East Wall in Dublin heading level four link. So I'm pressing H to flick down through these stories. Let's flick up through the stories. I pressed H to go down. I can press shift and H to go back. Not necessary to disinfect outside of food packaging after buying. Shoppers advised heading level four link. Let's just look at this for a sec. Let's press enter. And now not I'm going to not press necessary H. Tax heading not necessary to disinfect outside of food. And I'm now at the start of the article. Same link, link, same pay image. Shoppers are being advised that it is not necessary to disinfect the outside of food packaging after buying it in the supermarket. A specialist in microbiology. Okay, and you could then I could read that down with the At arrow keys. Food has said, but I could shop. also decide to to copy this article. Maybe I if, think this is, could, could be really interesting. I might send it over to Sam, see what he thinks of it. So let's just copy it here really quickly. Shop at Link Safe Food is the public body in charge of so consumer. So I'm holding down my shift key and just arrowing down. DR Evan left and block current when block left soon. Gore it is a March link, the biggest month of gross the late million. Yeah, as cool the food. And I'm just gonna. I've done enough there. I'm going to copy that with Control and C, and I'm going to go back to Microsoft Hold Word. Winnem. Word. Opening. Opening Word. Document Sorry, one. Sorry, I'll slow down slow my speech. Slower. Again. And I'm going to press Control and V to paste. And paste guess what? Edit. Shoppers are being advised that it is not necessary to disinfect the out. And I'd like to know what, recovery, what, what font print, that, H, that's in. O P. 11.5 point, grey 20 on white, Georgia, normal style, line space, I've no, I've, I've no sense edit. what that is, but it sounds a bit off, so I would probably do some work on that document. I might fix it up a little bit, make sure I'd run my little uh, my little text analyzer tool through it, perhaps. File name, okay. men, leaving menus, more sa save, don't. I don't want to save that. I want to go back to the journal not necessary for a to I talked to you at the when we were talking about the JAWS startup, I talked about forms mode, something called forms mode. You may be wondering, well, if H is moving through heading and shift and H is moving you back, and there are loads of other keys, by the way, on the keyboard, you may be saying, well, how do you type on the internet? If JAWS is taking the keys over for itself, how are you able to you know, um, interact, I suppose. And that's where forms mode comes in. Forms mode is the idea of being able to essentially tell JAWS, I'm in a form or I'm in an area of the website that requires me to enter information. So turn off your own keyboard shortcuts. And JAWS um, will automatically, uh, by default, enter forms mode for you. Now, I'm one of these weird people who's turned that off. But believe me, 99% of the people you work with will not turn this off. Not, no. But let's just show you, there is an option here for searching for articles. Search site, edit. Search site, I will now press enter. Edit. And you heard a little beep. I'm now in forms mode. So I'm going to search for, oh my goodness, Easter. And press enter. And it gave another little beep to tell me it was gone out of forms mode. And it's now searching for the text Easter. The journal. It's Joe Duffy interview. We've more people than ever calling. The biggest decision you make is not to put on air. That can heading level four link slow cook. Heading level four link. It's not realistic or viable to hold leaving cert practical exams in current time frame. Wet 6 20 a.m. 36,370. I'm not actually sure if it pulled up the Easter, Easter search, but the point is just to show you the forms mode idea. And you can also do that uh, on Google as well. So when you go to google.com, for example, App bar toolbar address. So I'm just going to go to the address bar in Edge. Google.com. HTTPS www.google.com. Google, Google my. 
Google, Google, search and I'm going to com- search for, I uh, want to know if I'll be Land. able to do anything on the May Bank Holiday Weekend. May Bank Holiday Weekend. E K E W. And press enter. W- and my w- Google results will appear as headings as well. So if I can press the letter H here. Allow button. Oh, block button. Just May got, a, got a Chrome uh, message there. Search sur- early Monday. People also search web results. Bank holidays in Ireland in 2020. Office holidays heading level three link. May bank holiday in Ireland in 2020. Office holidays heading level three link. I'm using the letter H to quickly uh, move through my um, my uh, searches there on Google. And again, it said the word link. So I can press enter at any point uh, to go into that link. There's lots of other things you can do in JAWS on the web. So for example, you can list all the links in a web page, on a web page, into a list view. So you can kind of browse through them with your arrow keys. So if I do that now, I can press the JAWS key with F7. And it will. Heading level three link May bank holiday will, in Ireland in 20. Links list dialogue. List links, links list view. May bank holiday in Ireland in 2020. Office holidays. www. Office holidays. Com. Single right point in place. Bank ho- feedback. Holidays and observe. June bank holiday. August bank holiday. May day. Why did the May bank holiday 2020 change when the month's first long weekend is and why it's a Friday in was six hours ago? Okay, that's, I think, specific to the UK as well, the May bank holiday, that particular one. So again, you can just arrow down and um, enter on any of those links and it will open uh, the associated page. The web takes a little bit of getting used to for people who are starting, but it's extremely powerful when you do it with JAWS. And uh, I I think people will find it really, really good. So Sam, I'm happy to take some questions on that. Great, yeah, thanks Stuart. We've got got quite a few come, come through on that section, which is great. So the first one we've got from from Tracy. Tracy has asked, uh, is there a way to know if a website has been written in a JAWS friendly way? As there are yeah. very different. It's a great, great question though. Really great question. Um, so I suppose Tracy, the first thing I always do when I open a website is press H to see are there headings. JAWS will also report in its default state. Again, mine isn't. When you open it, it will report, for example, there are X amount of headings on this page and X amount of links. If you hear that, you can be relatively confident that you'll have a good experience. The other thing I always say to people, if there are images on a web page, have they got a description? So when you press, just let me really quickly show you this. If you press, let's go to a website that you guys would know. Double. We go to the RNIB. RNIB RNIB will have their logo, I'm sure, on the web page and a few other things. Well, the letter G will bring me to the first graphic on the web page. A close-up of a person from behind holding a white cane in a street graphic. That is fantastic. I know exactly what's in that graphic. A close-up, there's a person there holding a white cane on the street. That's an example of a really well-labeled, succinct and concise um, image description. So... There are things, Tracy, to look out for. Labeled graphics, headings, clearly labeled links, that kind of stuff. Great. Thank you, Stuart. Um, Now we've got uh, from Shane. Shane's asked, how are you switching from uh, web to uh, web browser to Word so quickly? Yeah, apologies, Shane. So there's a couple of ways to do it. I was actually, what what I did there was I pressed, when I wanted to go from the web browser to Word, Word, because I didn't have Word open, I went back to my desktop with Windows and D, and I pressed W for Word and pressed Enter. But if I had Word open, I could press Alt and Tab, which is a Windows key stroke to move you between your open apps. And I could also, by the way, um, invoke a JAWS command, which is, uh, I'm really being tested with these shortcuts today, it's great, which is insert, <laughs> insert an F10, which lists all your open applications in a list view, and you can jump to whichever one you want. So there's lots of different ways to do it. Great. Shane's also asked, how are you, uh, the shortcut for, for turning forms mode on and off? Yes. Uh, so you can press enter to turn forms mode on and enter to turn it off again. But, but, but by default, um, when you install JAWS, it will do that for you itself. Yeah. Great. And then final one, um, this section, Julie's asked, uh, can you remind her of the shortcut to use um, 
when checking the font formatting. Yeah, and that's the JAWS key with the letter F, F for font. Okay. I tell you, Sam, the next time we do one of these, I'm going to be practicing my shortcuts a few days beforehand. So this is great. <laughs> You've got to do your homework. Yeah. I've got to do my homework, yeah. Even you, even you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Um, anyway, that's, that's all we've got for now, so we, we can move forward. All right. Okay. Um, Fourteen fifty-four. I just issued a shortcut there to tell the time. Uh, Windows or uh, JAWS key with F12. I wanted to keep an eye on my time because I don't want to run over on Sam. Six minutes to show you guys picture smart. For a close up of right. At the start of the session, desktop. I talked about the JAWS startup wizard, and we talked about the fact that the very first thing it said to you was to tick a box, are you sure you want to participate in, um, in sending information to Freedom Scientific? And we said yes. And I was saying to you, if you say no, you can't use Picture Smart. What is Picture Smart? So Picture Smart is a relatively new feature that came into JAWS about a year ago. And what it, do, what it does is it uses artificial intelligence from Microsoft and Google and other providers to attempt to describe a picture to you. And this has loads of uses. I found it personally very useful um, when I was doing things like getting photos from my phone. And you know, I think as a blind person, you're sending something. I might want to send a photo to Sam. And I want to make sure, first of all, I send him the right photo. Uh, so I, I, you know, I may need to check it first. Is this the is this definitely the photo I need to send Sam? So I can use Picture Smart to give me a broad idea of um, the description. So let me show you a, a couple of examples. Uh, I have a load of photographs on my computer. File Explorer, items, tree view. So I'll go to my OneDrive. OneDrive, sit. Items, view, attachments, my documents. Go to my documents. My documents, Adam Lawler photos. And I have some photos here of Adam. We'll, Adam can make an appearance, our, who will tomorrow be one. So he, but he wasn't one when he, he was only a couple of weeks old when some of these were taken. But uh, Adam will make an appearance in the webinar. So uh, let's press enter on this. Now I've labeled some of these already. Okay, so. Shell folder, not Adam holding his sight and sound teddy bear. So this uh, is obviously one that I did with Picture Smart, and it says Adam holding his sight and sound teddy bear. Let's see if what Picture Smart tells us, tells us it is. So to, to ask Picture Smart to look at this uh, file, I'm going to issue a JAWS command, which is what's called a layered command. Layered commands are when you press the JAWS key with the space bar and then something else. And the reason it's layered is because quite simply, they ran out of key combinations without layers. So layers are where they can add multiple commands. You layer keystrokes one on top of the other. So I'm gonna press insert in space, followed by P for picture smart and F, F because I want to recognize or I want to ask it about a file that I'm looking at at the moment or I'm focused on. So insert in space, P for picture smart, picture smart. and F for file. Picture smart is in progress. Here we go, it's in progress. Heading level two caption is a baby holding a teddy bear. Heading level five total number of faces in this photo is one. Heading level four, this object appears in the photo person. Heading level four, this object probably appears in the photo top. Heading level four is... Okay, so it gives you a lot of stuff and it, the, 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 the descriptions get a little vaguer as you go along. But the key thing we wanted was at the top... Heading level two caption is a baby holding a teddy bear. That's probably enough for me. Okay, you can, and you, you, uh, visually you get to see the picture as well. Now, let's go to one that isn't labeled. Adam... Ad, Ad, Adam FB introducing at FBB 2247CA0A4B58. Oh, there's a classic FBB and a whole lot of numbers. I have no idea what this picture is. So let's do picture smart again. Window, uh, JAWS key with space. P picture smart. And F. Picture smart is in progress. Let's see what we get. Heading level two caption is a close up of a person lying on the bed. Heading level five total number of faces in this photo is one. Heading level four, these objects possibly appear in the photo person, pillow. Heading level three, these tags describe the photo, baby, child, human face, indoor, nose, person, skin, toddle, top. I'd probably take an educated guess that it's Adam lying in his cot from that. Okay? So you get the idea. Now, I'll just tr uh, pull up some more photos, which are from my phone. Three view, level one. I definitely one drive personal do not know what they are. Shelf apps. Hand, hand out for pic pictures. Shelf camera roll. 
Okay. Two zero one four zero. So here's just a random. Two zero one five zero five two three zero eight five seven one two zero zero. picture that I've picked out. Uh, so we'll do window uh, jaws key with space, followed by P. Picture smart. Followed by F. Picture smart is in progress. And again, we get a. Camera roll. Picture smart results. Heading level two caption is a person holding a hot dog. Okay, so <laughs> I think this was taken at a German market I was at. It must be. Uh, now, interestingly, picture smart went a bit funny there. But anyway, I think it's a person holding Heading a hot dog. Heading level five total number of faces in this photo is two. Heading oh, level four, this object probably appears in the photo. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Person. Heading level three, these tags describe the photo. Baby, child, grass, holding, outdoor, person, product, toddler. Yeah, it looks okay. like you and you and you and uh, one of uh, your uh, your child. Adam. Yes. Adam. Look oh, like. the, this was a couple of years ago. No, that's um, I think that's with my goddaughter. Okay, uh, I've no, I've no idea. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so okay, maybe their jaws picture smart wasn't so cool. It's a, but look, this is a new feature. Um, you they are refining this, and they want to refine Aspar. it so that. You, if you're on a website, for example, and we come across one of those graphics that wasn't, that you come across a graphic maybe that isn't labeled, not like what we saw um, on the RNIB page, which is really good. But if you come across something that isn't as good, you may be able to use Picture Smart to give you an idea uh, as to what it is. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very new feature. It's a very exciting feature. And it's a developing feature, I suppose. So that is Picture Smart, and that is about all I have to show you today. And we really have whistle stopped in terms of JAWS. So I'm very happy to take any further questions now. That's great. Thank you, Stuart. That's, uh, that's brilliant. We've got a couple. Yeah, a couple of questions. We've got um, from Nikki, just, just uh, confirming the JAWS key. Um, you mentioned that it's, it's different for a laptop and a desktop. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, Nikki. So um, insert on the desktop. So the insert key is usually the zero key on the numeric pad or on the six pack of keys where you have home end, page up, page down, insert and delete. And on a laptop, it's the caps lock key. Great. Thank you. And then Tracy's asked, apart from F for file, can Picture Smart do anything else? Can it do internet? Pictures and I uh, so them. it it can. I've had very. It it they, they haven't really done a lot with it. With the internet, it can do. Uh, you can actually do. Um, you can scan a picture. So you can have a picture on a scanner or a camera, like the Pearl camera, which is a device you can get uh, as well through 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 ourselves here at Sight and Sound. So you could you could take a you could see an actual photograph if someone handed you something. Um, and yes, it will also do if you copy, if you have a picture copied to the clipboard, maybe from an email message, you can have that, uh, you can have that done as well. Great. Great. And George has, uh, has said that picture smart is amazing. Thank you. It is amazing. I, yeah, it's one of those ones where, um, when I saw it last year, I thought it was, I thought it was very exciting and, uh, yeah. I mistakenly so my the first time i ever showed picture smart i was showing i said to the we were doing a presentation and i said to the people who was presenting to you know i said now we're i'm showing a picture because myself and my sisters had gone for lunch the week before as the family lunch and all it kept saying in the picture was picture may contain three people with wine glasses glasses it kept talking about the amount of wine on the table there wasn't a lot so <laughs> my first experience with picture smart was quite funny of course, the Irish. Uh, of course, yeah. We're, we're drinking. So we've got uh, one more from George. We've got, uh, what's the quickest way, just going back to um, Microsoft Word, what's the quickest way to to make spelling corrections a few lines up from, from where the, the text cursor is? Um, um, okay, so I suppose just, and, and this may be going back to Text Analyzer. So Text Analyzer doesn't uh, detect spelling uh, misspelt words. JAWS does detect misspelt words in so much as it uh, it looks at the Microsoft Word spelling um, spelling um, highlighter thing that visually shows you misspellings on the screen. So if JAWS comes, if Microsoft Word indicates a word is misspelt, JAWS will say the word misspelt before it. Uh, but I also always show people how to use the spell checker in Microsoft Word with JAWS because it works really well. Great, great. That's that's. Oh, yeah, yeah. George just said thank you. That's perfect. Uh, that's all we've got for, for questions. Yeah. 
Hey. Uh, Stop that um, button. Jaws profession well, meeting controls. Yeah, Me just I'm sorry, switch off my screen share. Uh, just yeah, to say thank you, everybody. If there are further queries on Jaws, please get in touch with us. Um, it's a very powerful piece of software, and they're all the time developing and working on it. Um, and Jaws releases, they release updates to Jaws about every, between every six to eight weeks. Mm. Great. And we've had a few queries Stuart, about um, sending the, the, the content, the recorded content out. So if you're happy for us to send that out. Yeah, absolutely. So I think what we're going to be doing is putting this on YouTube and then getting a link. So we can email this to everybody who registered for this event today, if that's, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll arrange to do that um, in the next, possibly early next week. Great. Okay. So just to confirm, it'll be early next week then. For this to go out. Yeah. I'm not sure when we'll get this on YouTube and I'm actually not working tomorrow. So, but we'll do it. Yeah. We will get it done early next week. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah. And just, yeah. Lorraine said, thank you. It's the best webinar that um, George webinar she's seen. Very practical. Wow, thank you very much, Lorraine. Obviously, that, that 50 euro, 50 pounds was worth handing to you before the session. <laughs> Bribing the attendees again. Absolutely. No, that was great. Thanks, Stuart. I'll, uh, yeah, just to reaffirm what, what, what Lorraine said. Fantastic. It's, uh, very detailed. Lots. You've managed to jam pack um, all of that into an hour, which is impressive in itself. So, thank you. Um, and thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. As Stuart said, um, all of this information. If you'd like any more detail, please do get in touch with, with Stuart, with myself, um, all of our details on the website. Um, JAWS um, is actually um, part of our um, summer um, home user discount promotion at the moment as well. Um, so JAWS licenses are heavily discounted at the moment. Um, so please do uh, have a look on our website for more information. Um, yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's actually a really good way as well. Like if you want to, even if you want to experience it right now, um, you can download JAWS from uh, freedomscientific.com. It'll run for 40 minutes uh, at a time and then you can start your computer again. So if you just want to even get a, ha a feel for, just play with some of the things we, we showed now, uh, you can do that straight away. Fantastic. Great. Okay, so we'll... Uh... We'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. Thank you all again for, for coming and please do join us again next week where I'll be looking at the Tactilo. Uh, for those who missed, missed um, my, my brief explanation of it, it's a, a smart um, braille learning device um, for you know uh, beginners, um, very, very young, young children, um, but it also has more advanced um, braille features as well. So if you'd like to join us for that, that will be, that'll be next Thursday at the same time and the, the link um, and the information for that will be going out shortly. Um, so you'll receive all of that. Yeah, you thanks, everybody. Thanks, Emil, yeah. Sam. Cheers. Fantastic. All right. Thanks, everyone.